like notifications, you can click on the bell next to my subscription button and that'll notify you when I post a new video. Good morning everyone. This is the HVO Kilauea update for June 7th. In the Lower East Rift Zone, lava fountaining continues at Fisher 8 with fountain heights of 130 to 230 feet and it also continues to feed a lava flow channel through the Kapoho area with an ocean entry that has a broad front in the general area of Kapoho Bay and vacation lands. It's still producing a vigorous steam and lays plume that depending on the wind direction has been blown to the southwest. We remind you that lays or lava haze is a localized hazard and will not travel far downwind. The northern lobe of the Fisher 8 flow has stalled, although there is still some incandescence in the finger of that lobe that advanced into a low depression or graben several nights ago. The lobe that was active on the west side of the Four Corners cinder pit is now inactive and no other fissures are active at this time. Pele's hair and other lightweight glass fragments are accumulating in the Leilani Estates subdivision and strong winds can blow those particles farther from the area because they are made of glass and can cause skin and eye irritation. You should minim minimize contact with them. Good afternoon everyone. Explosive eruption expected for Kilauea later on in the week. We've seen the fountains grow from 150 to 250 feet. spilling into the lagoon. We've seen Kilauea start to slip and enlarge with cracks. Now the entire conduit completely blocked. Expecting a steam eruption far larger and higher velocity than the last eruption. And looking at these quakes, they look rather evenly spaced. So should we expect another quake in the next day or two? At the summit, a small explosion with the energy equivalent to a magnitude 5.6 earthquake occurred at 4.07 p.m. yesterday and created an ash plume that rose to a height of 10,000 feet. Seismicity dropped after the explosion but is increasing again and following the pattern of the next few days, we expect the next small explosion in about 24 hours. Slumping of the rim and walls of Halemaumau crater continues in response to the ongoing summit subsidence. Vog emissions from the summit and the fissures remain high and in the next several days wind may bring Vog not only to the south and west sides of the island but to the interior as well. Media is desperately trying to get you to believe that Kilauea, Fuego and Merapi are not related in any way, shape or form with the eruptions. Newest USGS maps from June 4th. That light red is where the active ocean entry is. A little bit south and to the east of Kapoho.
Also, USGS is expecting another incredibly large explosive eruption out of the Kilauea caldera. We're going to take a look at the May 31st through June 2nd videos from the USGS here. Now, the way they explained it a couple weeks ago before the very first eruption was you have the caldera, it has the conduit. It's nicely formed like a pipe, like a tube. But after these earthquakes and eruptions, it starts to slide and then fall back in and collapse in on itself, which then plugs the conduit, allowing no steam, gas, or vapors to escape. And as this does, the pressure builds and builds and builds. And once it reaches a critical point, you get this massive explosive eruption. Now, they're trying to also pinpoint this closure that we're about to look at in the landslides into the conduit as a reason that the fountain size is increased further down at fissure 8. Well, there's only so much pressure that can release through that lava, so they're looking for another massive explosion with the velocity higher than the last explosion because the amount of debris inside was much larger than the first collapse of the conduit. Here is the forecast for the grand solar minimum intensifying. The wider the wave is, the more extreme our weather will be, the more galactic cosmic rays will be allowed to enter our atmosphere, excite these magma chambers. So what you're looking at is the transition from the yellow into the green, to keep it into a simple form. That green line splits pretty much June, July of 2018. And then look how quickly the wave widens up into 2019 and then we have another gargantuan jump of widening and excitation of our atmosphere from 2019 to 2020. This is going to usher in crop losses, extreme weather, which will be beyond what you can even expect would come out of the skies, and more volcanic eruptions. This just being one, the fuego being another. The entire ring of fire is, shall we say, agitated at this time. And the consistent increase in galactic cosmic rays, these absolutely have an effect on triggering eruptions in silica-rich magma chambers. Mm -hmm.